Peregrine's Pianos has arranged several visits to piano factories in the past. We believe that customers appreciate the insight this gives into the high quality instruments that we sell. This visit has been arranged over two days to see Alga's first pianos. And in order to illustrate the cultural background, we have started the visit in Dresden, Saxony, Germany. We'd like to welcome you all very much to Dresden. Dawn, in her Welcome to Dresden, talked of how the city was transformed during the lifetime of J.S. Bach. Augustus the Strong and his son constructed magnificent Baroque buildings and in doing so, employed Europe's finest craftsmen. Gottfried Zilbermann, the royal court organ builder, also made pianos and trained large numbers of apprentices in the craft. This gave Dresden a special significance in the history of the piano. It's a great privilege to come here and to demonstrate to you the August Forster pianos, because August Forster is something very special. It's one of the oldest piano manufacturers in the world, and it's my job this afternoon to try and show you that this is a real lovely concert piano. After the concert, a tour of Baroque Dresden, starting at the Frauenkirche. This important Protestant church dates from 1726. It was destroyed in the war, but has been completely rebuilt, stone by stone, as the original. The organ was built by Zilberman and put in here, and the first performance of it was given by J.S. Bach. Soon, the group is on the Brühl Terrace, built in Baroque Dresden as the balcony of Europe. The terrace provides a fine view of the Augustus Brücke, completed in 1731. Next on the visit is the famous Catholic Hofkirche, built at about the same time as the Frauenkirche and containing the royal tombs. Zilberman built the organs for both churches. This is the largest organ that he ever built. It was the last work he did. I have heard an organ recital on that instrument and it is something very special. Then a dusk walk through the ornate Zwinger, construction of which was started in 1710. This Baroque garden was used as an open air ballroom, an arena for open air parties and receptions. Of special interest is the Crown Gate and the Glockenspiel Pavilion, made of porcelain from the Baroque Meissen works. The bus is waiting to take our party onto Lobau, home of August Furster Pianos, an hour's drive away. Anne Katrin Furster is the fifth generation member of the family to hold stewardship of the company as its director. She welcomed the party to the family villa with wonderful food and a forum for members of the group to perform various pieces, accompanied by an elegant white August Furster grand piano.
Nestled in the hilltops just outside Lerbau is the Honigbrunnen Mountain Hotel, centre for hiking and cycling through the countryside of Upper Lusatia. Our party of over 20 piano enthusiasts, tuners and teachers, however, had somewhere else to go for the day. A short drive led back into Lerbau to the Augustförster factory, a surprisingly unassuming looking building in which, from 1862, the company has produced its quality pianos. Now, Frank is going to show us around. He's been working in the factory for 43 years. I have started here to learn and so I'm und vorher on this place. Dein, dein Vater auch, ja? My father was also in this factory. So, Good. we fangen an in Holz. Fangen wir an mit dem Holz. We start with the wood. We start with the wood, <laughs> yes. The wood is sourced mostly from Europe, but some veneers come from further afield. In einem piano sind mindestens 20 verschiedene Sorten Holz. So in, in, the, in the piano building there's a lot of timber um, and there could be up to 20 different types of wood. This is the sleeping room where newly arrived steamed wood remains for up to five years before it can be used in the production of pianos. This is the machine room. You'll see precious few machines in, in the whole factory in this room probably more than anywhere else. In the next room, smaller components of the piano are crafted and glued together, then clamped to dry on this star machine, which itself is around 130 years old. And the long layers of timber that make up the sides of these grand pianos are glued together and hand clamped into place. August Fuster took out the first patent for an iron frame in an upright piano. And this is the ghost bladder, the template. As you're finding out, there's a lot of different floors in this factory and the piano started life right in the basement there in the wood cellar. And as the pianos work their way up, you'll find the finishing room is on the top floor. There are currently around 40 trained artisans working in the factory, all with multiple production skills that will see them move from floor to floor. And many have worked here for over 30 years. Here, the cast iron frame is meticulously finished. He's got to go over it six times, rubbing it down. Mm -hmm. It's been two days, yeah. three days to finish. <clears throat> we've got the body of the piano, we've got the soundboard, and now we've got the frame coming on top. It's got to be exact. Then, hidden away in a small room, the piano strings are manufactured. Here, copper twined over piano steel to create a bass string. The piano is cross-strung. The higher strings go on first, the, the treble strings. They look, they look like they're all the same, but they're different gauges. The group arrive in the carpentry shop, just as the front curves are cut on a grand piano. And this is done with a bow saw. This single image demonstrates the skills that Gottfried Zilberman used in his workshops nearly 300 years ago. Traditional methods which have long been forgotten in the wider world. <laughs> then we watched the first stage of the piano action assembly, starting with the key bed. The, the key sits on, on, on the key bed and it has felt bushings um, and it's very important that the key is able to move freely, but it's not so free that it all wobbles around. The newly assembled pianos arrive in the tuning room where the new strings are brought into pitch. 34 years he is in our company. And <clears throat> in one instrument became seven or eight tunings. And so finally, under the watchful gaze of Friedrich August Furster himself, our guests have a chance to try out the full range of new upright and grand pianos. It's very generous of August Furster to, to invite us and I would like to thank Frank very specially for his very kind work. Thank you, Frank. The trip to Saxony ended as it had begun, with local food, this time in the centre of Lerbau. 
That is our Mittagessen to, to round off the trip. After this, we're going to have the coach back to Berlin. And at this point, I would really, really like to thank Anne for her generous hospitality and for letting us see the factory. I think we should just give her a round of applause of appreciation. If you are interested in joining us on future visits or wish to know more about these pianos, please contact Peregrine's Pianos.